Hey guys, Mike here, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Crisp day here in northern Scandinavia, about minus one, so it's actually a very mild day and uh, really nice weather. This was all frozen behind me about four or five weeks ago. In fact, uh, ice had started to form everywhere, but we had a little bit of warm weather come in, started to thaw out, which kind of helps me out with today's video. Uh, about four or five videos ago, I did a video about my camera equipment, all the gear I use when I'm out filming. But I mentioned I was testing out a particular product um, in that video, and it's an underwater drone. About three videos ago, I did a fishing video in this very same spot, just at the end of summer. And you would have seen a lot of underwater footage as I was playing the pike on the reel, tiring it out. And the way I was able to do that is with this underwater drone um, from Chasing. It's called the Chasing Gladius Mini. You might have seen reviews of this on other YouTube channels. Uh, they contacted me a while ago and they said that they would loan this drone to me for a period of time for me to try out and uh, use in my videos. And I said, yeah, definitely. I, uh, I rarely accept products, but I'm always looking for ways to get better footage when I'm out here filming in nature and being able to film underwater is quite exciting, especially when you're interested in fishing. So when I first received the item, it came in a nice box. Very impressed with the packaging. You had pretty much all the extremities on top, like the control units and things. And then underneath you have the drone. They also gave me this backpack. I assume they, they thought I needed it because I'm always outside when I'm filming. So uh, yeah, this is a nice little backpack. I guess you could put it in any backpack, but this one has organizers in, so you can kind of space everything out and keep it organized to a degree. If you open this bag up, which I believe the bag is an optional extra, this is what you get in the box when you order it. Uh, we have a controller, basic controller. Um, this has its own independent battery that charges just at the bottom there, but it does last a very long time. And this connects to your mobile phone or your iPad via Bluetooth. It has a clamp at the top and the clamp obviously connects like an iPad or a mobile phone and it has quite a large size. and. It's relatively basic, but it does what it says on the tin and it's enough to control the drone and, and do everything you need to do. And it's pretty robust. You've got a control unit just here and think of this like the brains of the whole operation. This essentially connects um, via this tether here to the drone. Uh, so the tether, the drone and this are all linked in and this produces like a wireless signal. So you connect your phone to it. It essentially records all of the footage that you then download from this onto your phone via a, the Chasing Gladius Mini application. It's got HDMI and it's got an SD slot there too that you can use, although I don't think the SD slot does anything just at the moment. I think there's a firmware update or something Chasing mentioned, but they'll have to comment on the description on that. I, I have looked it up and I'm not sure, but the HDMI works. The battery as well independently charges on this, so this has its own independent battery too and it lasts a very, very long time. Longer than the drone, as does this last longer than the drone, which I think is the most important thing, really. We have basic charging equipment. This is just a wall charger, and you can see that this charges up the drone and it charges up the control hub. The actual remote charges via USB, so if you have like a Samsung charger or a USB wall charger, you can plug in this cable here. This big spool of wire here is the tether, and when I first heard that the drone had a tether, I was thinking, oh, that's a bit of a shame. It's not wireless, but uh, from using the drone over the past three months, uh, you really do need this tether. In fact, it probably would need a tether on it anyway if, if the tether wasn't providing the, uh, the, the signal to the actual hub. You know, it, it's easy to lose the drone without this. I think this is kind of what I realized from controlling it. I mean, this is the first drone I've ever owned. I've never had an aerial drone, so it can go in salt water as well as fresh water. The drone can go down to 100 meters in depth, and if you buy the 500 meter tether, the drone will go out 500 meters, obviously. Uh, this is the 100 meter tether, which is way more than I need, as you can see. I mean, this river here is probably about 10 meters deep in parts, and I can't really go out 100 meters without starting to get a bit sketched out because it's a river. So uh, ideally you'd use this in a lake in still water or in the ocean where you just kind of have the movement of the, of the water. In a river, 
you're going to drain the battery quick in the drone and you're always going to be fighting against the river. Today the hydro dam isn't open but I've taken this out before when the dam was open and the river was ferocious and um, the drone really had a hard time and I've put it through its paces and I've got some interesting footage. So the tether is something that I, I think is a huge positive with this and also the great thing about it is it floats. The tether will always float on the surface it's kind of got like a foam around it, but it's very dense and pretty robust. And the way these connectors are built at the end, they're really strong and you can take the whole thing apart. And there's quite a lot of slack of wire coiled in here and then siliconed in. And the cool thing is they give you a little pack with extra screws, a seawater sort of weight to change the buoyancy of the drone if you're in salt water and they give you lots more o-rings. So you can always change stuff around if you lose little bits here and there. But uh, the only downside of the tether, obviously, is you have to unravel it yourself manually, which can be a bit tough. I believe Chasing have invented kind of like a garden hose reel now. So when you buy it, potentially you might get that. I don't know. They'll have to comment in the description. But I've seen other guys on other YouTube channels and they have that. Um, so as the drone goes out, it naturally unspools itself and you can you can wind it back in. I tried to make my own out of an old garden hose thing, but it was so big, I just kind of used this. And to be honest, it really isn't a problem unraveling it, provided you do it prior to dry, uh, piloting the drone away or else it can pull the control hub in the water if you're not too careful. So, you know, take some time to set it up properly before it goes out there. But let's take a look at the drone. It's the main thing, isn't it? I guess this is where most of the money's going and this is it so as I say it goes down 100 meters it can go out 500 meters if you buy the 500 meter tether you have lights on the front so it can be operated at night it does 4k at 30 1080 at 30 or 60 and all those options are changeable on your phone whilst you're operating the drone um, it has a number of different features it can maintain its depth it can go really fast, although it has three settings, so low, medium and high. And if you put it on high, you will drain the battery. The battery life on this is set, or well, what Chasing says, two hours. But it really is two hours in ideal conditions, so still water. So it's not fighting against the moving water all the time, trying to stabilise itself. And on low, I have the most fun with it using it at night, where you have the lamps on. And I find the clarity of the picture very good. In the summer, on really, really nice days, you get excellent footage. And when I first got the drone, it was set to 1080p at 60, but it was doing all its own sharpening and, and um, rendering. And, and I switched all that off because I just found it to be too much. And now I tend to use it on 1080 at 60 and I do my sharpening and adjust my contrast and things in the video editor, much like I do with the camera gear I'm recording now. because I just find you get better footage. And, th and the footage really is pretty good, but it largely depends on the quality of the water that there'll be some guys who use the drone in incredibly beautiful parts of the world with crisp ocean water um, like that turquoise color with turtles and things swimming around and beautifully colored fish and the footage is incredible it looks amazing um, but uh, for me obviously i'm in northern scandinavia the conditions here are pretty tough um, in the summer there's a lot of particulates in the water in the winter those particulates tend to sink and the water's crisper but then it's colder and you also have ice sometimes a meter thick so sending the drone under the ice which i'll be doing tomorrow is is going to be interesting but again there's just that kind of element of harshness to whatever you're doing so uh you know i've still had amazing fun with it and i've captured some really good footage although my recommendation would not be to use it in a harsh river I almost lost, I say lost, it's on the tether, so you never really lost, lose it, but you never know, it might get caught in a really bad way and you can't get it back, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's best to just keep it as chasing recommend, uh, not to uh, use it in, in harsh kind of rivers and things, but uh, is it well made? Yeah, it is, it's really well made. It fills up with water, like any submarine does, through these gills here, and uh, those gills can take in small particulates, obviously, like grit and things. If it goes too close to the bottom, it can be taken apart with screws. I've taken it apart. I've cleaned it many a time. The props or propellers are very, very easy to replace if you need to. It has a very large aluminium barrel inside it. And, and the way it's made is all the units unscrew, much like the tether with this screw system you see here. 
and you can just replace parts of it and they don't tell you that but I wasn't meant to take it apart and I just did I'm not so sure whether chasing will be upset with that but uh, you know I wanted to clean it out it's no good presenting a product on video and it rattling full of like grit so I had to kind of clean it before this video to sort of show it in its best light if that makes sense to the to, to you viewers out there so all in all really nice and very robust heavy so it's not the kind of thing I would carry along with my bushcraft kit to enhance a video in the wilderness if I was shooting some kind of documentary or a film because it's too heavy really I've got this plus all my camping gear it's too much but they do sell one called Dory which I believe is about a quarter of the size of this and films in 4k 30 just has one battery and this device here floats along with the 50 meter tether so if you did want something small I'm pretty sure you could use that but I have no experience with that wow wind's coming in I better wait but let's get this thing rigged up and we'll get it in the water and you can kind of see what the drone sees probably a lot of rocks and lures that people have lost just unravel that a little bit chuck it in Good shot. There you go, it righted itself. I threw it in upside down. You can tell I'm a pro. This is the best way of doing it. You can see that the, the line comes out pretty good. That was one of my concerns when I first started using it. I was like, oh man, this tether. This is gonna be a problem with trees and plants. But I've taken this vehicle, this, this ROV as they call it, or everyone calls it, which is probably what it's supposed to be called through reeds many a time and uh, I've not I've not had any issues with it I've not been disappointed with that so we're all connected up it's pretty simple like a lot of other drones very easy to do we've got a number of different controls you know you've got lock mode which just shuts the drone off so you can see it starts to just bob around turn that on and it will switch back on and it's set to depth mode so I've you control the depth just with this joy pad here and it will just keep that depth or you can go into freestyle mode and then it will just come to the surface but it's more of like a freestyle mode and we can put it back on depth mode it'll go back under the water and it will stay at any depth you set it to but if you run into troubles you can hit lock it'll just shut the drone off and then you can pull it in via the tether it will put it back on and it's on low you can see there so you've got medium high it goes super fast on high medium's pretty good but i like low mainly because the drone maintains tilt angles when you go forward or backward on low which allows you to inspect the riverbed so you can see on other settings this is medium so it moves pretty quickly and then on high it will go really fast so we're about three and a half meters deep and the water's 2.3 deg degrees C. We've got it on low power mode and we're just out in the river somewhere. Um, we've got some fairly good footage, we're at 1080p at 60. I'm using it on low power mode as to, to sort of preserve battery. I've been out there for about sort of 15 minutes I'm on 77% battery. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's uh, just zooming along see that uh, we're getting smashed up on the rocks a bit there. Old Father River wants a piece. That is the one thing about being on, on low power mode in, in a river like this is that uh, you're kind of at the mercy of the river. Um, on medium you know it will it will stabilize itself it will be a lot better but uh, you, lo you lose battery power quite quick in the river on medium because you know it's just kind of working its nuts off so it's almost better to kind of get in an eddy like we are uh, out there where it's not moving so much a lot normally where a lot of the fish are actually and just let that kind of take you so I was cutting it pretty close there, going through the reeds, which is normally okay, as you saw, we went through for quite a while, but you shouldn't really do that. I'm kind of just giving the drone a bit of a beating just to show you guys, but uh, yeah, it sucked up a, a weed and um, yeah, one of the props is gone. One of the props is basically clogged, so it's, it's not working anymore. And it's just jammed on the shore down there, about 50 meters down there. So I'm gonna walk over and collect it. It's on 
14% battery so it's pretty much done anyway we were out for about an hour today which is pretty good considering the conditions they're cold you know the water's only um two degrees c hopefully you can hear me above the wind there rushing up and uh yeah i mean you know in a river as well so it's been pretty good i mean we didn't see any fish but it is extremely cold you really want to be over there actually for trout or up there for a body or as you call a perch so uh yeah let's go get the drone anyway oh son of a bitch there he is have fun just bobbing around Looks like it's freed itself up because it was on the bottom. I think this is why a tether is a good thing. Um, I'd have lost it a long time ago. Drain's out of power now, gone to zero. So uh, it's time to reel it in. This is where the tether breaks and uh, the drain's gone forever. <laughs> I can't even see it, man. I've been here for f ages. <laughs> I just want to... I just want a cup of tea. <laughs> Damn, it's cold. Prop at the back and then drain. Drain all the water out of it. You want to get that water out in these temperatures pretty fast because it's going to freeze and, uh, and then we got problems. So, it looks pretty good. Doesn't look like any plants are caught in the props at all. Uh, there's a remnants of something there, but it must have freed itself up. And that's kind of why it started to go back down the river again. But all the props spinning nice obviously it's off so yeah looking good no, no real damage to it you know some scrapes and things but it's a nice robust thing so you know you don't have to worry about it too much even with all the, the jip I put it through so yeah get it disconnected so I hope you enjoyed that video something a little bit different on the channel rarely do i ever venture into doing like product reviews and things like that but the chance to borrow this for a while <laughs> maybe they won't want it back it's been so abused but uh yeah the chance to borrow it for a while and just try it out i, I really wanted to do it and uh you know i'm a man of my words i said to them i'd make a video and use it and you know you'll probably see it the footage from it in other videos too if i'm <laughs> I'm allowed to keep it for a bit longer but uh, yeah I think uh, I've got some ice fishing coming up I'm actually out ice fishing tomorrow so I will take this with me and I'm going to sort of get an ice saw and a drill drill through the ice I mean it's, it's about 12 inches thick now the ice and I'll send this down and you know do some pimpling and see if I can get some good footage so really it's kind of useful as as in those kind of unusual videos to capture cool footage like that from my perspective um, but uh, yeah I thought I'd do a video on it I just wanted to show you as a follow-on from my camera video you know to honor my uh, my agreement with uh, chasing uh, Ch chasing innovations is the name of the company and this is called the chasing gladius mini and uh, they do a, do a chasing dory as well the little one I was on about and if you are interested links in the description feel free to check it out and uh, you can read more about it but uh, i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching i'll see you again in another one <laughs> i can't stop laughing